Hello and welcome to this course, Machinery for Diagnosis and Signal Processing. Uh, in the last lecture, we have seen the introduction of rotor balancing or rather rotor unbalance. And there we have seen that there are two types of balancing, one is static balancing and another one is uh, dynamic balancing. So, in today's lecture, we will see uh, single plane static rotor balancing a case study. So, a project is conducted, uh, the title of the project was static and dynamic balancing of rotating machinery in the field. And uh, uh, we are discussing the case study uh, on this particular project. Now, uh, basically there are two types of uh, balancing uh, procedure or balancing measurement or measurement required for balancing a rotor. Uh, in in uh, first method, uh, we need to measure the vibrations uh, at the support bearings and uh, the phase angle. And uh, second, in second method, uh, there is no measurement of phase angle. Only vibration readings are sufficient to balance the rotor. So, in these two types of uh, uh, measurement systems, uh, uh, with phase balancing and without phase balancing, uh, these are the two measurement types which are required to balance a rotor. Now, with phase uh, balancing method uh, requires uh, high end instrumentation uh, for uh, the phase angle measurement, uh, whereas uh, without phase angle measurement, uh, phase angle uh, need not to be measured and only vibration readings are sufficient to balance a rotor. So, uh, this drawback of uh, using the uh, measuring a phase angle uh, and for which a very high end instrumentation is required, that problem is tried to solve in this project. So, this uh, particular uh, static rotor balancing of a single plane rotor is without phase angle measurement. Okay, that means we are not measuring the phase angle. Uh, this is the experimental setup. Here, uh, this is the top view. The prime mover is electric motor uh, of 0.5 HP, and the power is transmitted uh, from motor to a driven shaft. Uh, here, we can say that uh, the RPM is uh, increased. Uh, and then uh, this uh, shaft is supported by these two bearings and uh, a, a single plane rotor is mounted at the center. Uh, these are the two support bearings uh, to measure the vibration at the support bearings. Here you can see that the accelerometer are placed. Now this accelerometer is connected with the uh, data equation system to a LabVIEW software and we can uh, uh, take, uh, we can measure uh, the amplitude of vibration at the same time frequency of the vibration uh, on the LabVIEW software. Now, this is uh, uh, the frequency domain chart uh, of vibration measurement. Uh, here, uh, in this experimental uh, setup, we have deliberately unbalanced uh, the rotor by providing uh, some unbalanced mass at the periphery of the rotor and uh, that unbalance can be seen in the frequency domain chart because in the last lecture we have seen that uh, the unbalance in the rotor can be detected when there is a prominent peak at uh, 1x frequency uh, and in this frequency domain chart we can see a prominent peak at 1x frequency. So, which indicates that there is an unbalance in the rotor. Now, uh, now we need to measure the vibration uh, readings and for that, for that uh, this experimental chart is prepared. Now, this is a trial mass. So, 
these are the four readings 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 readings we need to uh, measure. Then uh, the angle, uh, angle of uh, mass to be installed on the rotor. So that is no mass theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. So the trial mass has to be put on the uh, rotor uh, at uh, four different positions or rather three different positions. First reading is without any trial mass and the next three readings uh, the same trial mass has to be uh, attached at three different locations. Now uh, there are two support bearings, bearing A and bearing B. So vibrations uh, in the first run at bearing A is indicated by V1 0 whereas bearing B is indicated by V2 0 and subsequently uh, the vibration readings at bearing A and bearing B can be seen in this table. Now according to this uh, table uh, the experimentation is carried out and here we have obtained the vibration readings. So for the for no trial mass, uh, the vibration reading at bearing A uh, comes out to be 1.76 meter per second square. So here you can see that the trial trial weight is 16 grams and speed is 2490 rpm. And at bearing B, uh, the vibration reading is 1.46. Similarly, uh, a 16 gram trial weight is attached at uh, 0 degree. Uh, and uh, we find uh, we measure the vibration readings at bearing A and B. Similarly, the same uh, trial mass uh, take out from 0 degree position and put it at 120 degree position. Again, we have measured the vibration readings. Then the same trial mass is taken out from 120 degree position and put it at 240 degree uh, position and we uh, measure the vibration readings. So in this way we have completed our measurement. Now it is time to find the counter weight which will balance the rotor and for that we have used a three circle method. So uh, this uh, three circle method uh, is uh, a graphical method uh, which is uh, plotted on a polar plot. Now here we have taken a, uh, this is the origin, this is the horizontal 0 degree angle, uh, this is 120 degree angle, this is 240 degree angle. Uh, the first circle is drawn uh, uh, by taking the vibration. First we try to find out uh, the counter counterbalancing weight for bearing A. Okay. So, uh, uh, for no mass uh, that is for 0 degree, uh, the circle diameter is 1.76 meter per second square. Now here we have taken a proper scale as 1 centimeter is equal to 0 0.25 meter per second square and accordingly uh, uh, a circle is drawn. Similarly with a center at 120 degree and with a diameter of uh, 1.92. Uh, another circle is drawn, then uh, at, uh, at 240 degree uh, with diameter of 1.59, uh, third circle is drawn. Now we need to find out the intersection of these three uh, circles and uh, uh, then uh, by using uh, this formula uh, that is counterweight is equal to trial weight into uh, original reading upon uh, uh, the, uh, the second reading. Okay. So from this formula uh, the, the counterweights are calculated. So the same, ex same procedure is repeated for bearing B also and there also we find out the counterweights. Uh, the counterweight for bearing A comes out to be 140.8 grams at 250 degree and counterweight for uh, bearing B 
it comes out to be 133 grams at 52 degrees. Now, the mass that we have calculated, the weight that we have calculated is individual effect of bearing A and bearing B. And, uh, uh, and these weights are greater in uh, magnitude. Uh, since the calculated corrective weights are particular of individual bearing, it means that the corrective weights CW1 and CW2 can balance bearing A and bearing B individually. But we have only one plane to add the corrective weight. So, here we have calculated the two corrective weights at two different positions uh, which are uh, calculated uh, individually uh, for bearing A and bearing B. But to add those corrective weights we have only a single plane rotor. So, here we need to subtract uh, CW1 minus CW2 to find out the actual corrective weight. Similarly. Uh, the angles are also uh, subtracted from each other to find out uh, the final angle of uh, uh, the corrective weight and here we have calculated uh, CW1 minus CW2 and here we have taken a three uh, possible readings and we, we uh, try to check whether the vibrations have reduced or not. So, here we can say see that uh, for 8.85 grams and uh, at an angle of 195 which is nothing but uh, uh, 250 minus uh, 255 minus 50 comes out to be 190 degree uh, 195 degrees. Uh, so, the vibration levels at bearing A and bearing B has uh, reduced. So, the conclusion uh, from this experiment is that the three conditions of phase 2 clearly illustrate that the rotor can be nearly balanced by using this technique. During experimentation, it is observed that the calculation of corrective angle can be obtained by addition or subtraction of theta 1 and theta 2. Now, here uh, we try to see the situation uh, wherein uh, in which situation we need to add those angles and in which situation we need to subtract those angles. So, if the angle of theta 1 and theta 2 less than 180 degree, then uh, the final angle is calculated as theta 1 plus theta 2. So, angle to be taken in clockwise direction that is always positive in the direction of rotation of the rotor and if the angle of theta 1 and theta 2 is found to be greater than 180 degree. In that case, uh, we need to subtract it theta 1 minus theta 2. The method can be extended and has a greater utility to balance multiple planes by using the same method. So, in this way we have seen uh, the single, uh, single plane static uh, balancing method uh, and uh, here we have discussed one case study. In the next lecture, uh, we will try to balance uh, the dynamic rotor or two plane uh, rotor balancing method. So, thank you very much.